Hey guys, happy Thursday. Super excited again for our Live with Liz uh, that we have every week. Super excited for some of you um, new faces, familiar faces, and just excited to hear more tonight. I love Amanda. I love your story, Amanda, and I'm excited to hear even more. There's still parts of your story, I'm sure, that I don't know about, but I'm excited for you to share with us tonight about um, our actions and um, kind of just dive into some things that have kind of been on your heart that we've been talking about as well and um, going through there. So Amanda is a Ruby ambassador with Plexus shooting for senior Ruby. Super proud of you girl and um, I'm excited for you to share some of your story with um, the rest of us on the call tonight. So thank you for taking time out of your evening for being on. Thank you for having me. I have loved getting to know Liz. Um, we were power partners in our summer sprint to leaders retreat group. And so we've kind of gotten to know each other there and we ran into each other at convention and leaders retreat really quickly. Um, it's so busy at those events, but um, it's always good to see familiar faces and um, just touch base. So when she asked me to talk tonight, I was like, oh, what am I going to talk about? I guess I'll get into that in a minute. First, I'll tell my story. Um, so I was diagnosed with breast cancer at 34. Um, real big shocker. I had no family history of breast cancer, cancer in general. I'd always been super healthy my whole life. Um, really fit, active person, although my fitness had declined since I had went, and went through several pregnancies. Um, my twins were a year and a half old at that time. So, um, and then I had another daughter who was four. So I was busy with young children and then to get diagnosed with breast cancer really threw me for a loop. Um, it was actually in my lymph nodes already. So my, my treatment was chemo, radiation. I ended up having a double mastectomy. Um, and a deep reconstruction surgery, which is a little bit more involved than just normal reconstruction. Um, I like to share a little bit about that because a lot of people don't have never heard of it. And um, so if you know anybody who's going through breast cancer, it is an awesome option for reconstruction. I have like my live living tissue in my breast um, instead of implants. And so it's pretty cool. Um, but I wish I wouldn't have had to go through all of that. But anyway, after, let's see, I was in I just finished my treatment in January of um, this year. So it was an, a year and a half of treatment pretty much um, with surgeries and everything. Um, and so at that point, um, my cousin had reached out to me about Plexus and um, I was really being careful about what I put in my body. I was really trying to figure out why I got breast cancer at 34. You know, I obviously had no history, you know, um, genetic mutations, that type of thing. They did gene testing. And so I was really looking for ways to move forward in my health. And Plexus just happened to come along I um, at the right time. And it was exactly what I was wanting. It was funny because today I sent a screenshot to my sister. <clears throat> I was reading this book. Um, it's called The Anti-Cancer Diet. And I had made notes of different supplements and stuff that I wanted to start taking for preventing recurrence. And it was amazing to look at those lists of supplements that I needed to be taking and how much they correlate with Plexus. Wow. Amazing. Like magnesium, alpha lipoic acid, chromium, vitamin E. Um, so, so many things that were on that list. And I just feel like the Lord, you know, put Plexus in my life for a reason. And I want to share it with everybody. So that's kind of how my journey started. Um, my sister, and I work the business together. So we run our team page together, which is awesome to have an amazing power partner. We both have different strengths and we feed off of each other's strengths and pick each other up on our down days and stuff like that. Um, so we started working the business in January. Um, I quickly promoted to Ruby by the end of June before commit um, convention. Um, and then I've been sitting at Ruby ever since um, through the slow summer months. And I keep thinking I'm going to promote. I pushed for promotion a couple times and I still didn't make it. A lot of other people on my team promoted, so it wasn't a total loss. So I'm still encouraged. Um, and I know I'm going to get there. Um, I just feel like it's tithing and personal growth for myself and just um, reevaluating my actions, which is kind of what I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, so when I talk to Elizabeth, I was talking to her about how I feel like, um, uh, oh, I didn't say I've lost like 37 pounds in the past year. And so um, my health and my fitness goals have been 
a really big priority. And I kind of tell my sister that sometimes too, you know, like I'm like, I've made my fitness goals a priority in my life. Like I know I have to work out every day. Like I spend 30 minutes every day working out, whether it's running, biking, doing a video, going to the gym, whatever it is. Like I have chosen that as my medicine going forward. You know, I want to improve my health and I've made that a priority and people need to make their business their priority too. So I was talking to Liz about the choices that we make and how, you know, when we set goals, we make choices to do things during the day to achieve those goals, whatever they may be. So tonight I'm going to talk to you about how your choices reflect your priorities. Um, my sister sent me a quote the other day that said, how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. And it's so true. And it's such a simple quote, but we and I know we all realize how quickly time goes by, especially if you're a mom, you know, how quickly those years of childhood go by. It's a blink of an eye and they're in school, it seems like. And so, you know, really think about what you're using to spend your day with, because that is really what your life adds up to. Um, so the four things I'm going to talk about tonight is what we choose to see, what we choose to believe, how we choose to spend our time, and how we choose to live our life. And so what we see, believe, spend time with, and live our life is how we're going to achieve our goals and what we're going to accomplish in our life, right? Okay, so our first choice is what you choose to see. Do you choose to see your glass half full or half empty? So I'm going to kind of relate this whole training to my health and fitness goals also, because I know sometimes it's easy to correlate things and maybe it, you know, racks something in your brain or makes you realize something. So when I look at like my health and exercise goals, I chose, do you choose to see yourself past the point of no return? Do you think I'm just going to be frumpy and you know, not tone, or do you really see a potential for change in yourself? First, we have to see a vision and a possibility to change. So what is our vision? Do we envision ourselves losing inches or is it just to improve our diet or reduce sugar in our, in our diet? What is it that, what is our vision for ourself? Um, so now we're going to look at our business. So when you look at your business, do you see white lines? Do you see attrition when you look in your back office? Do you look at the fear or the uncertainty? Do you have fear of success or fear of failure? Um, or do you look at this as a huge opportunity? And do you look at your business as something that can continually grow? And do you look at all the new potentials that you have? Or do you focus on the people that are dead and gone? So you need to choose your vision and decide if you like what you see. And if you don't, it's really easy. All you have to do is change your goals and then maybe change your timing if you're not hitting your goals like you see. Um, do you see the opportunity for time freedom, financial freedom? Do you see the opportunity for helping others? So how you choose to see these visions and dreams that you have for yourself and your family directly reflect your priorities in life. If you have a vision of being successful, of the time freedom, the financial freedom, your daily priorities are going to be a reflection of what you see for yourself. So the second choice we have is what you choose to believe. I love this quote, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you are correct. And it's so, so true. Your mindset is everything. So in my health and exercise journey, did I believe that I could achieve my health and fitness goals that I have set out for myself? Was, what was my level of commitment? Was I going to spend three days a week, five days a week, 15 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, whatever you set that time for to achieve those goals. I had to believe that I could change and I had to be dedicated. So you need to be able to make a time commitment because things are not going to change for you if you don't commit time to it and you need to make an action plan. Um, I can't go to the gym with no plan for my exercises. If I go, I'm just going to walk aimlessly around and wonder which machine or which weights I'm going to do or which exercises. No, I go in with a plan. I know on Tuesdays is my leg and my butt day. And I know Thursdays is my arm day and my back day and things like that. And so I know which exercises I'm going into those days. And I walk in with an attitude that I'm going to accomplish those things when I get to the gym. Um, so let's look at your business. Do you believe that you're capable of doing things? And if you do, if you believe that, your mind is going to go to work for you. So if we believe we can change and we believe we can learn and grow, 
what do we need to do? We need to make an action plan so you're not wandering around the gym, so you're not wandering around Facebook aimlessly. You have a plan to put in the reps, to make the connections, to build those relationships, to message people, to follow up with people, to comment, to wish happy birthdays, whatever your plan is or your strategy to get people on board with you, you need to do the work. And you need to have the attitude that you, when you walk into your office or when you get on your phone, whatever, whatever you use for your business, that you're going in with an attitude of accomplishment. Like you have a plan and you are going to cross some things off your list, off your IPA list, whatever it may be. Um, but you are not leaving until you have crossed some things off. So what's your level of commitment? Is it three hours a day? Is it, I mean, three hours a week, sorry. Or is it 15 minutes each day or 30 minutes each day? Do you enjoy doing power hours so you can get a lot done um, in one hour and then you can focus on other things during the day? You need to be dedicated to make a change in your business and dedicated to growth. Are you going to choose to be involved or committed? So are you going to put the blinders on and draw the line in the sand or are you just going to pedal around here and there and see what you accomplish? Um, what's your action plan like? You know, um, like I said, I go in with an action plan to the gym. I know how many sets and reps I'm going to do of each exercise. So how many things are you going to do each day? Are you going to reach out to three people? Are you going to follow up with two? Are you going to train somebody on your team? Like what does that action plan look like? And I also believe the other important thing is your attitude. I think your attitude is a continual choice each and every day and maybe even each and every hour of the day. Um, but if you choose to change your thinking, it's going to change your actions. Um, I really believe that your attitude as a leader is going to determine your success in this business. Um, I think that 10% is what happens to you on a daily basis, yearly basis, your whole life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to what it is. Um, so what you choose to believe will change your future. I think this is one of the most critical choices that we have and that we can make to be successful <clears throat> and climb the ranks of this business is choosing to align your mind with your goals. Um, the third thing that I think is important when I think about, you know, my, my fitness goals and my business or how I'm going to choose to spend my time. So what does my day-to-day -day activity look like? Um, that activity is going to equal your success and it's going to help you achieve your goals. So when I look at like my health goals, you know, what am I eating each day? What am I feeding myself? <clears throat> what relationships I have? Do I have an accountability group? Do I have a partner that works out with me at the gym? Or, you know, um, a lot of people do like running groups and they find people that are the same level as them to run and train with. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to take a little drink. Um, so I think that's really important in your <clears throat> training and your day-to-day -day activities. And most of the time, we don't need more time in our day. We just need to decide what is important. And that is so hard for people to do. Um, you know, I choose to get my workouts done early in the morning, usually before my husband leaves. So I don't have to take my kids along. And if I don't get it done in the morning, I find time in the afternoon during naps or in the evening when my husband gets home. And it's the same way with my business. Like I find the time when I can, when I have time during the day. Um, I don't work it all day, every single minute of the day. You know, I find a set time that I can work it into my schedule. So when we look at our business, um, I really believe we talked about attitude. And I think when your attitude is aligned with your beliefs, which is what we talked about, and also the first choice is what, what you see, it really makes how you spend your time easier, right? Okay, so the activities that you choose to spend your time on reveal your priorities, correct? So if I'm choosing time to watch TV shows or go shopping when I really don't have the money to be shopping or I don't have the time to be watching TV shows in the evening or if you're feeling sad or anxious during the day or unmotivated to do things, um, it's okay. Those are your priorities in, in, in your day, right? And it's okay to pass up opportunities that don't align with your goals. We can't be tall 
and short at the same time, which means we can't be here and there. We have to be able to focus on our top priorities. Your time is really your most valuable possession and it's okay to be picky on how you spend your time, right? Um, so the next thing I wanna look at is the time that you spend with others. So your family, your friends, I want you to look at the five closest people in your life that you spend time with, that you surround yourself with. It could be people with them plexus, could be your best friends, your family, whatever. Do they challenge you? Do they energize you? Do they see the glass half full or half empty? Are they motivated, driven, successful? Or are they Debbie Downers, you know, always looking for the worst, full of drama, posting negative posts on social media? I really want you to look at the people that you're surrounding yourself with and the time that you're spending with other people because those people are either going to lift you up or they're going to take you down. So the other thing I want us to take time to do is to grow, spend time outside of your comfort zone, whether that's, you know, I know for a lot of people, it's telling people that you're in network marketing, right? Because that's it has such a stigma, right? And so get outside of your comfort zone, talking to strangers, telling your friends that this is the most amazing opportunity that you have ever been involved with. Um, let's see. Where, uh, so yeah, take time to grow outside of your comfort zone. I want you, we talked about food and my diet and exercise. I want you to choose mind food that's good for you and your business. So books, training, whatever it is, whatever you're feeding your mind with, whether it's spiritual stuff, um, you know, just growing, constantly growing and trying to be a better person. The thing I love is I saw this quote and it said that leaders don't manage time, they manage choices. And I think it's so true. We all have the same amount of time, but it's the choices that we make to fill our time with. There's a book I'm sure some of you guys have um, heard of it, um, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidy It Up. It kind of got popular here the past couple of years by Marie, I think it's Condos is her last name. But um, she talks about tidying up and organizing your house and finding things that bring you joy. And she said, before you can organize things, you first have to cull and purge what doesn't bring you joy. And it's the same thing in your life and your business. Because over time, organizing gets harder and harder the more things you accumulate, right? So you have to get rid of something. So instead of starting from a place of deciding what's important in your life, we tend to assume the worthiness of all of our commitments, responsibilities, activities, and we try to focus on how to get all of those things together and done in our waking hours. But leaders are going to learn how to purge, delegate, and be able to say no. So I want you to look at the things that you're involved with, and if they don't bring you joy and don't bring you a benefit to your business or your family, you know, think about eliminating eliminating some of those responsibilities so you can focus your time. We need to choose what we want most over what we want right now, right? And spend extra time being productive in our business, having self-discipline. Don't spend your time on activities that don't bring you joy or fruit to your life or your business. Um, and the last choice I think is really important is choosing how you're going to live your life. Um, I think your priorities, having no excuses, your focus, um, relating it to my health and exercise again, I think, you know, I, I chose to look to reach my goals, making fitness a priority every day, having no excuses for go not going to the gym or not working out. Like, I do not let myself make an excuse for missing a workout. I really don't. Um, if I, I don't care if I'm sick or if I'm hurt, I find something that I can do in place of, you know, if I'm hurt or whatever, you know, or suffering an injury, that type of thing. Um, what you're going to be able to do is watch yourself achieve your goals and you're going to see changes, measurable changes, just like in your fitness journey. Like I can see that I'm losing pounds on the scale. I can see I'm losing inches. I can see I'm living healthier. I'm feeling better because of the choices I'm making of the foods I'm putting in my body and the time I'm spending in the gym. And it all started with having a vision and putting it into action. So in our business, don't focus on the dead and gone in your business, right? The people who have fallen off or 
that people who aren't happy on the products, well, that doesn't happen very often, right? Usually it's something that they need to change um, because I think the products are amazing and will work for anybody who stays consistent with them. Or do we choose to focus on the growth, the living, the beauty, the future of our business? Um, we need to say yes to priorities that we have and no to something else. So be able to say no to other things so you can prioritize your business and your life. Stop making excuses. Start making decisions that reflect your priorities. Um, everything you do, think about how it's going to affect your goals. So like in exercise and fitness and losing weight, you know, I think about the things that I'm putting in my body or the things that I'm doing. If I'm sitting on the couch all day, that's not very productive, right? Um, if I'm feeding myself foods that aren't healthy for my body or aren't going to help me gain muscle or um, lose fat, that's not being very productive, right? It's not a going, it's not aligning with my goals. So everything you do, think about how it's going to affect your goals. And I want you to align your actions with your priorities. Um, instead of, I don't have time. Instead of saying, I don't have time, try saying it's not a priority and see what feeling you get from that. I'm gonna give you a few examples. So if you have a movie night planned with your family, and you say to yourself, it's not really a priority to me. That doesn't really sound right, right? Because I put my family first. I really do plan to spend time with my family. I put it in my planner on certain days. Like we plan to do family events and I don't work my business. Um, so that doesn't sound right. That is a priority, correct? What about going to church on Sunday? You know, what if I said, oh, I don't really feel like going to church this morning. That's not really a priority for me. I think I'm going to just focus on my business today. That still doesn't align with my personal goals and my personal beliefs because I feel like church and my faith is really important to me and it is a priority for me. But what about this one? Tonight, I think I'm just going to sit around, even though I didn't get my work done. I didn't really reach out to anybody, but I think I'm going to sit around and watch, I'm going to binge watch 10 episodes of my favorite TV show. It's not a priority. Yeah, that, that doesn't really sound right, right? That's not a priority. If you really have the goals to, or the, your priorities right and you want to achieve your goals, you're going to work your business instead of watching TV for five hours at night endlessly as something that fills your mind with nothingness, right? Um, so don't manage your time, manage your choices. I want you to put these choices into action and watch yourself achieve your goals and see changes in your business. You're going to see measurable changes, just like I talked about the measurable changes with weight loss. You're going to be able to measure changes within your team and within your business. Like you're going to see your PV grow. You're going to see your team grow. You're going to have measurable changes, right? And you're going to personally grow and your belief is going to grow. The more action that you do, the more your belief grows and you start to believe in yourself. And it really, again, it all starts with a vision, a belief and action. We're faced with choices every day. What we see, what we believe, how we spend our time and how we live our life. Each of those is full of lots of individual choices, right? Little smaller choices that we have to make. So you have to choose to believe in yourself and produce action in your life that aligns with your goals. So I'm just gonna end with, um, you know, my prayer for each of you guys and my prayer for myself that I have each day. And I want you guys, you know, if you're a praying person to implement this prayer into your pray, prayer life, but it just says, Lord, lead me to make choices that bring you glory and allow me to experience the life that you intended for me to live. So that is what I have for this evening. And um, I will pass it back over to Liz. Oh, I love it. Love your prayer too, girl. Um, I, I love, I love that you hit on, um, you hit on some things that I've really been kind of hunting in on myself and really just looking at, but I love that you've really, I love your example of health and fitness and relating these topics and these thoughts all the way back to that, because, you know, none of us would have been, um, in this business or sharing this with others or even trying to reach a certain goal in this business, but wasn't for the products, right? Um, and, and for the fact that we are passionate about health and wellness and being, uh, maybe it's just 
you know, growing past the place that we've been all of our life or growing past um, where we're at. And like you said, it takes the action. And I love these four tips that you've, um, well, several tips, but these four categories that you've kind of broken it down for us so that we can, um, we can use it in our future, um, future businesses, but in our everyday life, you know, really we can. So, and you're- I love how Flexus relates so much to, like you said, our health and wellness. It relates, it correlates to like my spiritual walk. I feel like a lot, just a lot of life lessons in correlate in between all three of those things. And so it's pretty amazing to see. I'm always, yeah, amazed. I'm like, Oh, that really correlates to my faith yeah. walk or whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. I know it really does. It absolutely does. It's all connected. All of it. Absolutely. Does anybody have a quick question for Amanda? Before we hop off, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> and if some of you have questions later, you can certainly send them to me. I can send them to Amanda, or you can reach out to myself or Amanda. I'm sure she wouldn't mind. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much again for getting on the call. Thank you all that are on the call tonight. Thank you for being on for uh, all that you do on a daily basis for yourself but for our teams as well, um, whomever's team, if you're not on my team, some of you are not on my team, um, but we're all one plexus, right? And um, I just love that we all can come together each week and learn and grow. And thank you for doing that tonight, Amanda, for sharing your story. Your story is beyond amazing to me. Thank Such you. Such a strong, strong woman you are. Thank so. you. And thank you so much for having me on and asking me. And I appreciate the the opportunity to grow in my training and stuff too. And it helps me to dig deep. And they say, if you need to learn something to train on it. Right. And so yeah. I took a lot of this information and, and buried it deep in my, in my heart and my brain too. So it, it does me good to talk about it. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thank you again. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye.